Welcome to the Scientology Outside of the Church podcast. I'm Jonathan Burke. And I'm Jason Roba. Welcome, everybody, to another podcast. This podcast is sponsored by the Advanced Org of the Great Plains. That's us. So anyway, we're going to have another podcast uh, today on the revolution of AI uh, and machine learning. Artificial intelligence is AI. And um, probably heard a lot about this lately, Jason, about uh, chat GPT and uh, Microsoft's uh, artificial intelligence threatening people. And, uh, you know, there've been a lot of iterations of this sort of thing going on lately where things have kind of gone Skynet <laughs> a, a little good, bit. Uh, yeah. AI is not such a clearly defined term. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned the term machine learning, and then there's artificial intelligence, and there, there's those are two terms we could probably clearly define for people because I think um, that ends up causing a lot of anxiety for folks. Yeah. Uh, what is yeah. that? Well, our, our, our artificial intelligence is where a programmer or programmers, more likely programmers, get together and they decide that they're going to write some code that learns based off of information given it instead of, okay, computer, run a program that runs my pages software on my Macintosh computer. This is a program code that takes information learns from it, and I'm really breaking it down simply, learns from it, and then can do something with it. Um, another example would be these um, diffusion programs that they have, like uh, MidJourney, or um, gosh, several of those now, um, public and private, where they've given it art, and it said, hey, this is art, and then it takes that art and then you say, well, I want you to make a picture that looks like a hand drawing done by Salvador Dali of a uh, desk and chairs and two plants. And it will add a Salvador Dali twist to it and give you an unexpected result <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> every time. And sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not so good, but it's been getting better. I've been playing around with it for gosh, what, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight months now, and it has drastically improved. And it seems like a lot of these uh, artificial intelligence programs, there was sort of a bell curve that we were dealing with. And over the last six weeks to a couple months, this bell curve has peaked and it's all, and when I say downhill, I don't mean it in a negative sense, but it's all downhill and they've gotten to a critical point critical mass where they can take this information and do something worthwhile with it. And it's something to talk about instead of it going horribly wrong um, for the most part. So AI and machine learning, the line is becoming more and more blurred. Machine learning is, is where it just learns whatever you tell it. And it tries to think with this in a way where it can draw from one thing and another and put these things together and starts to think. And the big hullabaloo is whether any of these machines, and there was one of the uh, Google uh, software engineers that said Google had an AI that was quote unquote sentient, Skynet-y. Yeah. And there's been a few others and they've had to pull the plug there. I forget who it was last year or the year before. They've, they've had to pull the plug because they've gotten too smart, too fast. And they didn't want them to get out of the building, basically, so to speak. And there's been rumor that one in Japan did get out of the building and is wandering the earth hmm. on computers or computers somewhere. We're not going to get into that today, but I think we should. So, <laughs> so we, we might at the end. Yeah. So yep. the, the, the thing is, is that uh, I wanted to take a look at, at, at the, the AI and the machine learning thing from a couple of different angles, uh, given what it could do for Scientology and for the world. 
Um, we'll try and stick as close as we can to independent Scientology and what it can do. Uh, but in my article last week that I wrote, um, I thought to myself, well, what if you had all of the information that uh, L. Ron Hubbard wrote and you put it onto, uh, well, and you can upload things to chat GPT. We should probably take, take a pause here and, and mention that chat GPT is on fire right now with a lot of people and there's tons of videos on YouTube about it. And it's, it's all over Google and it's just taking the world by storm. And it's, it's probably the most, the, the best well-functioning AI out there. Lisa's been uh, talking to it a lot and asked it to explain some basic Scientology principles. And I had somebody on Facebook that said they uploaded Scientology zero to eight to it. And then they asked it questions and it metabolized it, assimilated it just fine and was answering, answering those questions. So I thought to myself, what good would it be if you had an AI and I'm already looking into this and this is something I'll talk to you about after the podcast too. Um, I'm already looking into this in a, to an op open source version because chat, chat GPT is open source. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, so yeah. you can do the same thing yourself and you can put it on, you could put it embedded in a website. And if we were to give it our lectures, our technical volumes, our policies, um, and, you know, it's just basically, you just gave it everything and said, okay, learn this. That's what machine learning is all about. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. I'm stealing the mic. No, no, this, this is a good caveat here because I, I think um, one thing it'd be absolutely good for is if, if it did have all the tech uploaded and it, it did, um, did its thing where it, it cataloged and tagged everything, this could be a really good training tool. Um, yeah, that, that was, that is exactly, you know, you know, I'm, I think, yeah. how could I train people on this? And, and, and you know, and it would really help train people. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah for auditor training. Um, I imagine you could do something. Cause I was thinking about like with, with meter drills, especially with a the theta meter, if there's some way for an auditor to have a, an AI PC, an AI, a pre-clear on the other side and, you know, somehow be able to, you know, you, you could, rather than just doing the book of e-meter drills, you could have, you know, all of level zero, all of level one. Uh, yeah. Auditor. And so you, yeah. you, you could do something like that. And then, you know, once, once your, your uh, auditor and training has, has done some, some training with, with AI, then, you know, go get in front of a real human being. So I imagine there'd be a way to do that. Uh, the difficulty would be just, just, I mean, actually it's probably not a difficulty. I'm sure Mikael or someone out there who works with the digital meters could, could figure out a way to just have um, have the meter uh, telemetry be broadcast when it's tagged with, <laughs> so I don't know how that works. When, where you, where you tag certain words so you could get certain words that have have charge mm -hmm. on them. So I, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of it in general terms, but I'm sure there's a way to do that. I'm, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a software engineer, but I'm sure there's a way to do that. Someone out yeah. there, would, oh, you just need to do this and this, so they can reach out. Yeah, they know how to well, do that. They for the theta meter, they have a serve a, a client server set up where you can set it up to where you can do do um, training and things like that. What the way we do things with over Zoom is is we we're doing the same thing obviously with the client and the server with Zoom. You know, we're talking to each other on Zoom in a client, and that's and for those that that aren't in the know. There's a client and a server. A server is when you get on eBay, you go to a server, your computer is your computer at home is the client. You're going to that server, you're pulling records off of a computer in a file folder somewhere within a hierarchy of files. And that makes your pages for your website. That's all, everything we use on this planet, at least right now. And God, I can't wait till this improves. <laughs> <laughs> is is how it works so it, it could be workable to where you could m do mock sessions and things like that and um but I'll, I'll get to that in just a minute i just was thinking to myself the the if you were to give it all of the information and you wanted to search for something 
because we've got this whole project that you and I and, and, and Jamie are working on of doing all of the references and cleaning them up and making the pro- appropriate color and type style and all this stuff. What if you could take all of that information and you could give it to an, an AI entity, quote unquote, and put it in there and you say, okay, because I, I, I don't know how much you've done this, but I do this all the time. PDF search functions suck. Yeah, They suck. And trying to find something, I mean, my tone level on the tone scale, when I, I think about, okay, now I've got to go search for something. I spend two times as much time searching for something as I do actually using it, almost two or three times searching for it because I can't find what I need quickly enough because there's no appropriate search engine for that sort of a thing. And AI, correct me if I'm wrong, AI is, and they're, they're already saying that chat GPT may be a Google killer. Mm-hmm. So there's there's some food for thought right there. Yeah. If if that's the case, um, you could give it all of the information. You could say, okay, what what are all the references that mention a floating needle? And give me those references and show me a snippet of of what they are. And I mean, you know, you can do that with Chat GPT as it stands right now. If you were to say. Um, in the selected wor- works of Walt Whitman, give me quotes, all of the quotes from his works that mention woods. Right. <laughs> and probably yeah. give you a litany of things back, you know, but I mean, you know, that, that gives you an idea that it can be done. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just the way that uh, search engines are uh, coded now, it just, we don't have that function, uh, functionality, like you're saying, with, with its ability to scan through PDF that just doesn't exist. No. So it, yeah. But it's, it's one of those things where, like, we're talking about what clearly defining what AI and machine learning or expert systems are for folks. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's, it's going to be one of those things where what, what we know, you know, colloquially is, is artificial intelligence right now is going to be incorporated into our life as quickly as the, the internet and personal computers were there through, you know, the, the late 90s into the early 2000s, where it was something that was, Almost, you know, only in the the well-to-do people's living rooms, and then suddenly everybody had a computer, and everybody was on AOL and Netscape and everything by by 2000. And so I imagine uh, expert systems, machine learning, and all that it's going to be something we're all using here uh, deliberately within a few years. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I looked it up last week when I got a bee in my bonnet on it right before I wrote the article for the blog blog post. And when I write a blog post that obligates us to a podcast and I looked into it. And the first thing I found was personal assistance, like Siri or Alexa, that sort of thing. And I'm not saying that's what I found. I found, I, cause I looked it up and I looked up open source. There was at least a dozen different personal assistant open source pieces of software that, and one of them is, is a, a, a little startup. Um, they, you can either do it on your computer or you can buy their little computer with, it looks sort of looks like a, a, an old Macintosh in a way. And you can have your own personal, your own private personal assistant, closed ended personal assistant like Siri, but you control it. And and you can also do it with Raspberry Pi. And Raspberry Pi is really cool. Build your own uh, hardware architecture. It's really a, a neat thing. So that's what got me started on the whole thing. And one thing led to another and led to another and led to another. So another thing I thought of, and I don't know that, I mean, I don't know how far things have gone on this. Tell me what you think about this, but if, if you said, okay, I'd like to talk and I'm not saying that this is it. I'm just saying it would be interesting to do. So don't nobody out there in uh, podcast land have a cow and say that this is blasphemy because it's not blasphemy. This is a hypothetical. What if you told your AI, I'd like you to talk to me based off of all of the records I've given you. I'd like you to talk to me as if you were L Ron Hubbard. Yeah. In, in the way that he talks. I mean, you know, there's more than enough data sets when you look at everything that's written. And here's another thing. This is another thing I thought of. 
you could also upload all of his books, all yeah, of his all fiction. fiction. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not trying to be creepy here. And, and we can get into the creepy factor as well. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not trying to be creepy here because, you know, there was a, um, God, it was a Black Mirror episode where the gal's husband died and she ordered a robot, a droid that looked just like him, mm-hmm. and, but didn't act quite just like him, but sounded just like him. Have you seen that episode? Yeah. <laughs> I've seen all, all those ones, all the uh, yeah. black episodes. Of Philip yeah. Media. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and, and then she ends up putting him in the, in the attic at the end because it's just not him. And they go upstairs for the dad's birthday or something like that, you know, to visit him. And he just stays up there. So I don't, I wasn't meaning to make it anything creepy, but it would be interesting to see what would, what would come out with something like that. Oh, absolutely. And I think we should put a pin in that creepy part and come back to that with like the, at the last 15 minutes of the podcast there is some interesting stuff there that, that i would like to get into but with mm-hmm. that it's interesting because there there could be you know if we want to say you know write something in the style of lrh um you know fiction or write write something in the style of an hco an hcop or an hcopl you know you could do that like if, if you needed to uh if you wanted to write something up and you wanted it to be in the voice of lrh so to speak you could do that you know if you needed to do something for like a uh yeah, if you're working on a project and you needed to make um, something, but you wanted to have that something be in a very similar style to LRH's wording, you could do that. Like if you needed to uh, put together an admin scale for something, and it has nothing to do. Yeah, with it. yeah, you could yeah. That. And that that was that was where I was headed next on this was okay. So let's say let's say because we'll get get to the auditing thing because it's 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 sort of. Uh, how how blasphemic can we be in one podcast with with purists, especially if somebody's in the church and listens to this? That this that they just spontaneously combust. Oh yeah. Um, personally, I think LRH would find it very intriguing. I mean, you know, I'm I'm sure he would be thrilled with the theta meter. I'm sure he would be thrilled with with uh, remote auditing, as as we call it. Um, I, I mean, you know, the advent of the internet and the, the three, the inbox system and email and all of this, all of these technologies are things that I think that he would robustly, and I'm not, I, maybe I'm biased, but he would robustly embrace. And oh, this isn't any different. This really isn't any different. You know, if you could talk to a computer, I mean, he's a science fiction writer. Come on. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. He, he, he would, he would, he would, he would absolutely be entirely in support of this. And I think he would also have said something like to the extent that, uh, cause you know, he was, he was into all kinds of hardware electronics and everything. Like even with, with the synthesizers and instruments he owned, like he yeah. was the top of the line samplers and everything that you could find back then him, him and captain bill, they had the, what is it? What was that original sampler then the, the fair, was it the Fairlight? The Fairlight, yeah, yeah, and that 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 was uh, early digital sampling technology, and it's like if we talk mm-hmm. about basic, basic, basic machine learning, yeah, he he was into that stuff with music applications back in the late seventies, early eighties when those pieces of gear were coming out. So I I think he would absolutely be into this, and like again, I was saying he might say something to the extent of you know, well, you know, once once he's gone completely out of this universe, you know, there there he is, and all of his technology. Uh, cataloged because all the you know like the church has done they've done their uh their tape restorations and they've got everything down in those vaults and it's like trying to keep all the tape the the tech in a um a hard physical copy well here we are putting it into a, a digital copy that's indexed so, right yeah you know, and then we need to get to that too that's another thing yeah because you take all the tech and say it is locked away down in a vault and the next civilization comes along and digs it up and say they learn to speak English, how how would they navigate through it? Yeah, you know, they if they don't speak up. English. Yeah, and they don't have somebody there to uh, to say, okay, you'll want to start here and maybe read Fundamentals of Thought first. Don't try to read Book One. Read Fundamentals of Thought, and you're not you're mm-hmm. not gonna you're not gonna find a reference anywhere like that. You're not gonna right. have you're not gonna have an old timer say, oh, here, you know, open up the book and you know start here and then go over here because there's not anything laid out in a linear fashion like that uh, as of mm-hmm. yet. So something yeah. within machine learning could be, you know, could take someone's understanding where they are with the tech and be able to say, you know, like, like you're saying, somebody uploaded zero to eight and you could, you know, ask questions about the tech because all kinds of people who are new to Scientology, who've never um, 
been inside of a church before because there, there's a growing number of people out number of Scientologists who've never stepped foot inside of a church of Scientology and just haven't been indoctrinated in that way. Uh, right. And, yeah. And well, a lot of our public have never been in the church. Yeah. Well, you're one of them. Yeah. You know, right. Never, never, never really been in the church at all. So uh, Lisa, Lisa hadn't either. So it's, it's, it's very interesting to me if you were to just keep it on a, a, a gradient if you gave it the uh, the the data on misunderstood words, for example, and you said, okay, um, random bulletin, random policy letter, and said, okay, so you've got this, and it says, yeah, I got it. All right, and then you say, okay, I'm a student, and I don't understand what this policy means, and it could ask you, and um, some of these. Um, I don't, I don't know that chat GPT does it, but I mean, you know, it, it's probably a couple of, a couple of months away, if not a couple of weeks away where you can communicate with it verbally because the open source ones that I looked at that aren't chat GPT allow you to talk to it and it to talk to you like Siri does. Right. So if you were word clearing a bulletin, it could say, all right, where were you last doing well? Yeah. And it could. Yeah. And just go forward. And then it could, you know, spot check you or ask you the definition of every word at that point. And it would know, I mean, it already knows the definition of those words and could say, okay, so give me some more sentences and it would understand what you say. I mean, and now I'm not, I'm not looking for something to replace a human being. I'm just saying, wow, mm -hmm. this, this is what they were writing about back in the twenties and the thirties and the forties. Yeah. And it doesn't, it isn't something of fantasy. It is something that is happening right now that we could use to aid people in learning things. Now, if you took it another step and feel free to jump in mm -hmm. an another step, let's say you taught at the, at the um, ethics policy letters and you went to it, you said, I'm having some difficulty in life on my second dynamic, family, girlfriend, wife, kids. And it said, okay, so tell me about that. And you explain it to it. I mean, and, and then just go on and it could actually say, help you find what condition you're in, do an admin scale. You see, see where I'm headed with this? And I've got an even, even more, maybe this is getting a little too black mirror, but I just, I have <laughs> Or you could also have it hooked up to your uh, a, a, key, a keystroke logger on your phone and all your devices, and it could keep track. Keep track of what? Yeah, right. Everything you say and do, and it might be. And okay, this this is getting black mirrorish, and it might be able to make suggestions. If we're talking right. about it, that could analyze. Right. Well, right. At twenty one fifty seven on twenty three February of uh, twenty twenty three, you said. And it could get in there and analyze what you've said and done. Now that is getting a little dystopian in that sense of it, of it doing the keystroke logger kind of thing, but maybe having a keystroke logger there, once you're getting down in, in the lower ethics conditions down, you know, danger. <laughs> to <help laughs> right. down. Yeah. Right. Maybe, right. It would activate that then. Right. So when your personal assistant says, <laughs> and I don't mean this in a creepy way, but it's going to sound creepy. I've been watching your actions, Jason. Right. I think we need to make some atonements, yeah. <laughs> you know, so like, said in said in the two, 2001 Dave voice. Yeah. Jason, <laughs> what's the matter, Jason? You know, I mean, you know, and, and that's where it gets that's where it, it gets creepy. But if you keep it, if you keep it above a certain line, you could really do a lot for people and people could could get a lot from it it within these these um lower level things now you know especially the cross-referencing like let's jump back to that if you could cross-reference all of the things about okay well tell me about everything lrh said about problems and what are the best ways to handle problems as an auditor right i mean with with PDF references, and then it's it it highlights them and says, you know, here here they are. And and the most important thing, and this is something I haven't said in any of the podcasts 
uh, that I recall is a lot of people get stuck on, well, Hubbard said this in 1952, theta clear, mass clear. And then they're like, well, I'm going to be a theta clear. I want to be a mass clear. And then later on, it was just LRH just said, I wish I'd just said, just clear. It's just clear. That's it. You know, well, if if you get these cross references and everything, it could tell you and you could explain to it that this was a research line. And this is what he said, you know, in 1950, he said, don't pay any attention to, to past lives. It's a bunch of hooey. And then the next day he said, you know what I said about it being a bunch of hooey? I was wrong. There is past lives are real when he was doing book one. And you could explain this to the AI and the machine learning part and get it across that what he said then was not exactly. And, you know, this is where that thinking with the data thing comes in. This is one of the crucial, crucial crossroads for AI and machine learning is to think with the data. Um, Lisa went into chat GPT. I went into copy AI and I wrote part of a blog post with copy AI and everything that it said about Scientology was negative. Every single last thing. Yeah. Cause it scrubbed, scrubbed through the internet. Right. And it, it, uh, you know, going right. here and books. Yeah. Yeah. And so this, this is, this is an important point is like Hubbard says in the computer series. I don't know if you've ever read it. It's not, not very long, but he, he basically says, look, a computer is only as good as the information that you, you give it. Right. Now there's another, there, to me, there's another extension, maybe four, I don't know, but you give the computer the information. You have to make sure that the code that you give it to, to metabolize that information, if you will, or really understand it, that code is, is fair and just with what the information is that it's getting and it's duplicating, like we would use in, in TRs, um, what that information says and means. And what I saw with the copy AI was that it was horribly biased yeah. based off of the information that it had. So that's when I thought, okay, after my experience with copy AI two weeks ago, it was, I mean, and you know, it worked out fine. I mean, I just went in and, and it, it basically helped me ghost write a blog post. And I really, I really liked that. It gave me some really good jumping off points that I wouldn't have thought of otherwise, mm -hmm. but the, the negative stuff is the issue. So that's why I say, if we had something like this for independent Scientologists, it would have to be something that was on a private level. And when I say private, I just mean, you know, and, and that's the thing is bias is, is everywhere, whether it's about Scientology or it's about rock music or it's about classical music or EDM or whatever. If you take, you know, just because it's on the internet is it doesn't mean it's true. Yeah. And just bias is the universe. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. You know, I mean, if if you if you if you told an AI, um, well, this is a day. I'm looking out the window right now as I say this. This is a day. There's a hill. There's trees. There's part of a, a, a driveway cover. All of this stuff, and this is what a day looks like. Well, it would go okay. This is what a day looks like. But you have to educate it on the fact that this is what a day looks like on this date, in this hemisphere, at this latitude, in this geographic. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, you know, there's a lot more that, that, that goes into it that has to be said, because otherwise, any other day wouldn't be the same. Because the, and I'm being really, really um, <laughs> pedantic and um, what's the other word? Uh, significant on it for a reason, because again, what the computer series says is, is it only knows what you tell it. Exactly. It doesn't have the other 53 perceptics. Like if you had something to measure the gravity right there on, you know, whatever today's date is, if it's the 14th of March, you're in the Southern hemisphere of planet earth, you don't have 53 other human, per, human body perceptics to tag that day with. If you did, you might be able to create a little bit more of a, a data for that computer to pull in 
to catalog what what March 14th of 2023 in the Southern Hemisphere at you know something in the evening over there, you know, be able to yeah. Be able to tell you, yeah. yeah, and I mean, you know, we're 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 um, we're quickly approaching an equinox in the next couple of days. So the daylight here is the same as the daylight there. And you'd need to, you know, you'd have to explain these things or it would already have an understanding of it. So that's, that's something else is, you know, what is the difference between a, a, uh, a danger condition and a liability condition and a power condition and all of that stuff. So, I mean, you know, they figured a lot of this stuff out mm -hmm. in machine learning. Yeah. So, and, you know, a jumping off point too, like, like you're saying, for for keeping it within a, a closed system, the people that would us using it, you know, we would know to take what it says with a grain of salt. You know, we're not gonna, we don't want we people like us want to get too caught up in significances of things. We go, okay, yeah, the AI, you know, it, it's like mid mid journey hands, like you know, <laughs> you know that mid journey is gonna make weird looking hands on on people for the most part. So it's like there's mm -hmm. gonna be some yeah, yeah, yeah. Count the fingers and toes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's not quite ready for prime time yet when it gives you seven fingers. Yeah, and then they look like toes and <laughs> yeah, and they're all crossed over and they look like they have arthritis and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, so, yeah. But yeah, so there's, else right. yeah. Yeah, it gets everything else right. And sometimes you you just blown away by some of the art that this thing can create. And Lisa's been blown. I haven't had an opportunity to mess around with chat GPT, but um, she's just blown away with the the data that it has and everything. But if you could cross reference something and you, you'd say, you know, uh, when, when is the first mention of a floating needle in, in LRH reference, in an LRH reference? Well, it should say 1964. I mean, that is something we know. But I mean, you know, you could ask it questions that nobody's ever had an ability to find because i mean you know if, if it's one thing hubbard was is is he was prolific in writing and explaining everything and getting it written down some might say that he was pedantic i appreciate as do you that he's pedantic some don't right but that sure gives you a lot more data for something like machine learning and ai whereas if it was something else it wouldn't have near as much information, which I think to uh, is a boon to us. Yeah. And I mean, it just like you're saying with the computer series and, and data and all that, I'm just thinking here, like people who, who would have a, an immediate um, aversion to this concept of using machine learning to catalog the tech. I mean, the thing is all, all those things have been put in place in an analog form already. There's already indexes in the books. There's already glossaries. There's already definitions. There's already footnotes. There's yeah. already reference. So that's already done in the analog world. This is just taking, you know, a, a digital file clerk, so to speak, using a Dianetics term, you're using yeah. it as a file clerk. And it, it's got, you know, standard memory banks. If you look at uh, Dianetics evolution of a science and put that side to side with AI. It's interesting because I think he even talks about a computer being able to do this. I want to say in the first few chapters. Yeah, he does. First chapter, it talks about that, where he talks about at some point we'll have a computer. So mm -hmm. here, you know, there he is already referencing that uh, in uh, evolution of a science. So it's, you know, we're already putting, we're putting in place something that is already extant. It's just, you know, you don't have to have an old timer or, or a staff member come and say, oh, you know, here, you're going to need this book. It's just, it's right. If, right. You know, it's, you know yeah. Which subject volume is it in? You know, what series is it in? And, and I would think that with the data that we have, like in the technical volumes or the policy, uh, the OEC volumes, that with that index, that already gives it a good head start. So at least it knows where to go to and it understands the hierarchy and all of that pretty, pretty quickly because that's been done. It's just a matter of you know, the, the cross-referencing, and if you ask certain questions, I mean, based off of what I've seen with chat GPT so far, I think we will be amazed at the understanding that, and, and it's, I'm not trying to find something to replace somebody. No. I'm, I'm trying to find something that would allow us to have people come up and ask questions and find something, and it would be a, a, a digital file clerk that, like you say, that could answer any question or you could ask a question nobody has ever asked before and you could find all the references. Now, the other thing is, is we have all of the digitized lectures. 
not just the transcripts. So if you wanted, and you know, I mean, I get people all the time asking me, well, is it okay if I just read the transcript and I don't listen to the tape? It goes a lot faster. Well, I'm not a big fan of that because the way he says it, the inflection and everything, you know, I mean, you know, uh, uh, to me, it's a little bit like cheating, but with chat GPT, for example, or something like that, you could, it could pull up a sound bite of that particular lecture at that point and give you the sound point, the, the sound bite and the transcript at the same time. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. You could ask it. To Holy find smokes. Times. Yeah. Yeah. Just give it that audio. Yeah. That's actually really cool. Cause before yeah. it's like, you, know, you had to rely on, on, on asking a friend, so to speak, like how long does it take to do the pure? F- and it's like, you're not going to find that easily. But if it can reference like, well, you know, here we've, we've had, you know, a thousand people, their data on it. And it, it takes some people this long. It takes some people this long. And it's like, you've got to mm-hmm. ask somebody about that. You know, even, even within the church, I would imagine sometimes you have to ask a staff member, or just ask a friend in there or something that, and, you know, we, we say that there's no verbal tech anywhere, but uh, we, we all know that sometimes you just have to, some people will ask something and an answer is given. And this is a little bit better than verbal tech because you're actually cross, like you're saying, you're referencing and cross-referencing things within the material itself. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. exactly. Yeah. You're, I mean, you're asking, you're, you're asking LRH. Yeah. The through, body of tech through, yeah. Right. The body of tech itself, all the computer is doing is going, I know where this is at. Oh, and there's this, and there's this, and there's this, and there's this, and all of these things have to do with something, you know, I mean, you could say within the years of 1955 to 1958, how many times did LRH mention the word GPM? Right. And then, okay, well, that's that. Okay. And then you can see as it develops from that point on or whatever, I mean, you know, uh, GPMs didn't come around until like 59, 60, I think. But, you know, I mean, there's just so many different ways. Now to to move things along, uh, we talked about, you know, maybe doing a uh, word clearing with somebody or, maybe doing ethics conditions or just, I mean, you know, if you, if, if you really wanted to get it super simple, Lisa and I were just talking about this this morning. Um, somebody that she's talking to had mentioned the 10 August, which is a PTS handling. And it's really simple. Chat GPT could do that for somebody when you and I are, well, we did, we're on opposite sides of the planet, but you and I are sleeping or something. You could have an AI do a 10 August on somebody to me, that's super cool. Yeah. And it's not hard. I mean, it's, it's three or four steps and, you know, the person feels better when they don't have anybody else to talk to. I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying um, a, um, an AI is going to stop somebody from jumping off the golden gate bridge. Right. Yet, but uh, you know, if Elon Musk has his way, uh, which they're they're getting there really quickly, and I think it's the physical side they're having more difficulty with than it is the software side. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean these these robots are going to be ubiquitous within the next five years. Yep, starting to make doll bodies. Yeah, starting to make doll bodies, and then we'll get to the end of this. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm get, get to the, get this in the end. Yeah, yeah. So you know, you could do a 10 August on somebody, and it just you know would just add the AI would just ask them, okay, so how how are you feeling sick? And okay, good. Any other ways you're feeling sick? Okay, good. All right. So when was the first time you felt this way? Right. And the person enters it in and says, and in, in the AI just says, okay, good. Who at that time was suppressing you? No evaluation, no invalidation. And the person answers it and they say, I'm feeling better. And that's how a 10 August works. It's one of the most miraculous PTS handlings of all. And it's so dead simple, but that's Hubbard. That's, that's the thing about it. So, you know, that that's one way. Now, if we take it a step further, and I'm not saying we're planning this. I'm not saying it's a good idea. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. This is strictly, for the record, strictly a conversation about only about what if AI could do, let's say, well, let's keep it simple. Book one, yeah, Dianetics. 
mm-hmm. Dianetics. Okay. You could have somebody go through, I mean, the, the, the steps in, in book one are super easy and, and somebody could get online and say, I'd like to get a free AI session of book one. Right. Okay. Um, shut your phone off, you know, go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, and with that too, just, just right in there, that would be so interesting too. Cause I think there's a thing where you get a newbie, somebody who's, you know, not indoctrinated in any way, they're going to be a little shy too about what they communicate. And there's sure. that, you know, all that I've gone through it of like, do I, do I trust? Can I, and it's not my trust with my honor. Like, right. Right. What, what happens in Vegas? Is it going to stay in Vegas? Right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the, yeah. I mean, we have people cancel all the time that make appointments. Yeah. And they're just, a, they're, they're shy and afraid. I get it. Yeah, I get it. Because what the, in the walk world, you know, what out in the civilian world, uh, out there outside of Scientology, people go into psychotherapy and counseling and they get evaluated and invalidated right off the bat. You go yeah. and talk to a counselor about something, they're going to tell you in that first introductory session, what's quote unquote wrong with you. Yeah. 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 And, and you have the computer say, look, there will be no evaluation, no invalidation. This is, this is how it's going to go. This is a demo for demonstration purposes, only Dianetics or book one session. And it lays out all of the things. I wanted to make sure you're comfortable. Are you comfortable? Yes, I'm comfortable. Okay. Would you like to begin? Sure. Boom. And you start lock scanning, you know, Mm -hmm. just as a nice subtle gradient or something like that. I mean, Wow. That would really be something. And it's not something you can't, I mean, it is something that can be done right this very minute that we are doing this podcast. Yep. ARC straight wire. Yeah. ARC straight wire. Recall a time you smell the wildflower. So it's simple. I mean, holy smokes, yep. you know, and you just enter it in. And, and when you've got voice, that makes it even easier. Yeah. And you want, you want uh, out at you? Do you want? <laughs> you yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Do you want South African? Do you want English? Yeah. Do you want you know Western? Do you want Tennessee? You know that sort of a thing. Whatever the person's comfortable with, and it's and, and I'm not I'm not saying this that it's it's a replacement, but it is something that people could do to feel more comfortable. Yeah, and, and give them an idea of what it's like. It's 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 like an assist. You know, an assist is is a Easy, easy way to help somebody feel better, a touch assist or a nervous assist. I mean, you know, even assist is probably a gradient above that because some people don't like being touched and being told, feel my finger. Right. <laughs> they don't like being touched. I get it. I get it. I don't, I've never been to a masseuse and I probably never will. I don't want a stranger touching my body. Thanks. I have a hard enough time when I go to my, my doctor, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, turn your head and cough. I mean, come on. But that's 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 the sort of thing that would be really cool to do and and you could get into other things i mean you're really pushing the envelope by saying okay i'm going to i'm going to put a person on a theta meter and i'm going to take them in session in a metered session i'm not saying it's impossible i'm saying we're probably a, a few a couple to a few years away at most on that sort of a thing where you could take somebody an AI could take somebody if they understood the basic principles of, of auditing, metered auditing, which are very simple once you do it and, and get a good understanding of what you can, what you can't, and what you should or shouldn't do. That, that's a whole other line of, of conversation that, um, you know, uh, I don't think there's ever going to be a replacement for a sentient being. No, we're, okay. we're making, we're making uh, genetic entities with AI. Yeah, yeah, we're making genetic entities. And they're, they're, like Ellery says in the computer series, they're only as good as the information you give them. Now, granted, on the, on the track, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of, of robot bodies and doll bodies. And, and, and we're, now we're going to get into the latter part of the podcast here. So hold on to your hats, folks. Here's where it gets really freaking bizarre. Uh, so all bets are off here for the next few minutes, but if you've ever gone in session and you've gotten auditing at some point, you're going to come up with robot bodies, doll bodies, 
um, mixed m meat bodies and robot bodies, which we're, we're seeing here on planet Earth, it shouldn't seem so weird to you. All you have to do is look at the headlines. And Elon Musk, for example, is, is working on this, uh, I'm going to say analog meat body uh, implant to the brain that allows people to have motor skills that they no longer had due to some disease or illness, that sort of thing. But I mean, we're already there. I mean, we've already got robot hands that they're putting on people and robot arms and robot legs that function with thought. We have jet pilots that think their plane off of the runway. Mm -hmm. This right. is real. We have video game hardware that allows you to play a video game on your LED screen without a joystick. And all you have to do is think it. These things exist. I don't know how many people know this. They're out there. Get on Newegg. You'll see them. Okay. So how this stuff works, I don't know. But it, it well, it, well, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it they understand the mechanics behind it or there wouldn't be products on the market that do these things. So that being said, robot bodies, doll bodies, that sort of a thing. One of my biggest, one of my biggest concerns with AI, and um, this is a hypothesis of mine and it could just be a completely software issue, but the, the thing with Microsoft and its most recent AI system and all of the crazy things it said, trying to split up marriages and all this stuff. Based off of my knowledge of knots, Ned for OTs, and well, we don't even, even really have to go there. It's just if you understand the, the specific terms in Scientology, there can be a ghost in the box. Absolutely. And I think there already is. Uh, we talked about this on our show quite a bit. Uh, me and my best friend, Timony Wild, we, we had a show called The Weekend Strange with a former friend of ours. And this is something that that's a lot of people actually outside of the Scientology community are concerned about um, having living beings uh, out there. You know, you can you can frequently find them on dating websites and they're not just uh, or, or in any kind of uh, those fake profiles that you find. And I'm not talking about the fake profiles like sock puppet profiles, but I'm talking about those ones that you go on Facebook and it's like, this is obviously not a real human being. This is obviously not a sock, but there's something they're talking. Maybe it's somebody's chat bot that escaped out of a laboratory or out of, a, you know, <laughs> some somehow, but there's yeah. some behind it. And like I was saying, it's a genetic entity and they're semi sentient, just like the genetic entity is. You know, you, you find GEs out there walking around in cat bodies, dog bodies, horse body, bodies, birds and everything. There's GEs everywhere. And, um, you know, we have a tendency as as um, humans at this point on the time track, uh, the, the collective, I shouldn't say we, but there's a collective thing amongst humans to think that, you know, the human is part of natural evolution on this planet. Yes, the human body is, but us as mm -hmm. beings, no. So... A lot of people, you know, once they see that, you know, okay, you're the Phaeton and then there's, there's a body and the body has a, has, has a, basically software running it. And that software is a genetic entity. It's an operating system for the body. So here we are creating uh, genetic entities that run in these very crude, you know, machine bodies that we have around with tablets mm -hmm. and computers. And, you know, there, there's all the Boston dynamic stuff and the, uh, what you were talking about with the um, Elon Musk stuff. But we're coming to a point again on the time track. Like you said, this isn't the first time. No, no, this this yeah. this stuff has happened a lot. I mean, I know from my from my own auditing that I've done with other people and my own personal auditing that, you know, that more often than not, these things don't end well. <laughs> and it's only a matter of time until somebody slips themselves into the system. Right, right. Well, they're talking about them. And, and that's the other thing is they were, I just saw this, I've seen it a couple of times now that they're talking about in the next year to three years, that they will be able to, and I'm not, I'm talking about this from their viewpoint. I'm not talking about this from a Scientology viewpoint. This is what they're saying is they will be able to take you, quote unquote, as whatever they think you are, we think of ourselves as, as Thetans, they will be able to take you and move you into a computer. Yeah, they, they don't have a when you, when, when, when you when you die. 
And yeah. I and I thought, okay, that's interesting. So what gradient has been skipped here? Yeah. I'm, and I'm, I mean, you know, maybe they can, maybe they can't. I don't know. But I guess the, the thing that I'm saying is, is this is so eerily reminiscent of things that I've seen in session with people that they've experienced on the track in auditing in the past, in this, in this universe and my own, especially, you know, it's, it's like LRH talks about in the shades of night, we're in this, this, and he said that in 52, that we have this brief window before the technology owns us. Now, there's a reason why he said that. And it wasn't just because he and Heinlein got together, maybe Asimov and, and maybe later on Philip K. Dick and stuff. All of these guys, all of these guys wrote stories about this stuff <laughs> for a reason. And it yeah. isn't because it was fiction. <laughs> it's because they, they know this stuff has happened before. It's just right. it's too, too prescient on their minds. Yeah. And, and like, like we were saying, they, they were talking about the ability to upload someone in quotes uh, into the system. They still don't understand the concept of what it is to be alive. They still don't understand that you, you are a no. being, that, that you don't, you know, you're not. So they, they consider life to be, you know, all the facsimiles and they, they call it your conscious. So maybe they'll be able to upload facsimiles and maybe they'll be able to upload a personality, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But that's not that's not an individual, just like you're talking about with the Philip K. Dick or the uh, the Black uh, Black Mirror episode, where they uh, um, they uploaded the guy, quote unquote, to the to the system. It's like, yeah, you might be able to upload a personality, but that's not the beingness. But I think that it's just a matter of time until somebody exteriorizes himself and interiorizes himself into a machine. Into a machine, right? Which is where I was headed with it. Next yeah. is you know some, some that's do it. yeah. 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 I mean, I, I, I have, I have seen and have been aware of an, an entity, a ghost, whatever you want to call it in a computer or in an electronic device. I've had, you know, people say, well, there's their house is haunted. I have personally, personally seen a car that was haunted mm -hmm. by, by a close friend for months I mean, th this sort of thing can happen. Yeah. It's it is the re the real deal. So the this is something that you know we have to be careful of on on these things. Is is um, and you know a knots auditor can go in and check check out a, a a computer. A knots auditor can go in and and audit somebody at a distance that needs needs help. So I mean, you know, it isn't something that that we can't handle, yeah. but it's something that we have to be careful of. Because, at least in this society, I don't think they're nearly as aware of the repercussions of how easily it is to move electrons around and cause things. I mean, I have spirit. I have spirit boxes and and the 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 little puck. I have we have apps on on our phones and stuff like that, where a disembodied being can send communication through the software to me and say something i'm i i have countless countless incidences of where they were able to manipulate that that software and that those sensors to say and or cause it to do something this is no different exactly not it's, one bit this is i would say this is only different in the sense that it's more sophisticated you know yeah it's yeah it's more sophisticated and you know i mean if, if they can do that with an iphone if they can do that with a standalone device um, I mean, again, we live in the dark ages as far as what we are aware of with these meat bodies that have 52 perceptions, but yet we can only see in a narrow spectrum, uh, in this super narrow thing. And, and I want to say this because I always love telling the story back in the, uh, nineties, um, they developed infrared green, uh, night goggles for the U S army. Oh yeah, and, and and they had to immediately mothball the infra green night goggles because they were having helicopters fall out of the sky because the operators, the pilots, were freaking the f out yep. at what they were seeing in the infra green spectrum that was there, but they could not see with their own eyes. Yeah, all the stuff this, that are. 
<laughs> yeah, all of the stuff, our cats and our little toy poodles and all this stuff when they're barking at things, they're like, what are they barking at? That's what they're barking at, probably. Yep. So the, the, this is a cautionary tale of you better be careful about how much sentience and how much access you give to things. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it, it, and, and maybe maybe this the, the whole podcast is a, a cautionary tale. I don't know. But it's really interesting. You know, it's just like anything else. Tech, is technology, as long as it's used for good by people who are sane and it's not taken and used as a weapon, it can really, really help a society out and push things further along, especially when you're educating people on things, not just Scientology, but holy crap. You know, if, if you could have a computer that was unbiased, teach your child why in the world would you ever send them to public school? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you were talking about weapons. That, that brings me to one of my biggest concerns. And I think this was also one of Hubbard's concerns when he talked about the sixth invaders. And he was saying, oh, they won't be around anytime soon because they're an electronics people. And his, I think his concept of where electronics was going, he didn't see that it was going to go exponential. Um, yeah. With, I don't think he, or maybe he did know. But my whole point is you're talking about the weaponization of it. Um, my concern with the technology like this and what we were just talking about with the ability of interiorizing into electronics, that we basically have a Trojan horse here for the next invaders. If if they come from elsewhere, there's essentially yeah, well, here, uh, an advance there. There's the scouts are here. Uh, you know, we haven't seen the first wave of invaders yet, but at this point, you know, you could have everything set in place as a military maneuver before the troops arrive so to speak that's my biggest concern the framework for yeah 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 the, yeah the yeah, trojan the horse is, yeah. is your is your iphone that's sitting next to you while you're sitting on the toilet talking to your wife about some personal subject or something like that i mean you know we could get into that and that, that alexa is recording all the time and that you you in the terms of service Amazon knows everything you're talking about and they have it all cataloged by the billions. <laughs> the entire human psyche in that way. So that way they know what, uh, where all of our weaknesses are psychologically. Psychospiritually. Yeah. So that, yeah. Uh, well, all the intel gathered I've, by the traders. <laughs> tw- yeah. Twice, twice in the last two days, Amazon has scammed, scanned our site, our website entirely. They do it once a month. And they've done it twice in the last two days, specific pages that they're looking at. And I know it's Amazon because it is coming from an Amazon IP and it says it, that it's, it is Amazon. So, so why, yeah. why would Amazon, why would they want some information like that? I don't know, but you know, I mean, it's a, it's, it is a, a brave new world and what is done with the information that's pretty much where, where I wanted to, to end off at the podcast is what is done with the information. If it be it for good, fantastic things can happen with brilliant minds behind it. And if it's done for bad, well, the universe is littered with those civilizations and, and probably has a hell of a lot of reason to do with why we're here on this third rate planet and second or third rate sun with radiation and all that is that this is done over and over and over and over and over and we need to do our very best to do the right things with it to educate people and pull us out of the dark yeah and as, as hubbard was so talking, anyway yeah I'll, last thing i want to say go- is ron was talking about this was i think in the late 40s early 50s he mentioned the, the concept of you know it's it's uh i'm going to paraphrase it's, it's unwise to develop an atom bomb unless you're also developing the um, defense of an atom bomb. So as we are going along and developing AI and all the uh, the ways that it could be used for good with good intentions, it'd behoove us to also work on a defense for when somebody weaponizes this because it's everything is used as a weapon. Everything always has been <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, weapon along the time track. Yeah. So I yeah. think it's, it's important that we keep the tech going and we, you know, we make knots auditors, like you're saying, is you know, that's the only technology we can use as as a uh, uh, a means of defending against this kind of thing is knots technology, you know. Yeah, well, you might as well have the AI help improve and get the charge off 
of a case in order so that the person's perception is enough that they can properly audit knots and become aware of this stuff without any hassle. Yeah. Um, it, it can be done and, and I think it should be done. And it's not something that, that I'm, I'm afraid of, but it is one of those things where you need to think three or four times about how you can shut this stuff down, what, what needs to be done in order to make it for good and not for bad. What hackers can do with it. Yeah. yeah. What hackers can do with it. Right. You know, and if you can keep it on a private system, uh, you know, you could do what uh, George R. R. Martin does and, and he does the computer. He writes all of his stories on doesn't even have a, an ethernet card <laughs> for good reason. Yeah. 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 You don't want to, you don't want to be a Stephanie Meyer and lose your stuff before you even finish it. And it goes out to the world because somebody hacked your computer. So there are, the security is is key is the security rudiments do have to be in but uh, anyway i've had a lot of fun doing this podcast with you jason a lot, a lot of thought provoking concepts and and uh fodder for conversation with our listeners and if anybody wants to comment about this feel free to comment on on facebook um we'd love to hear from you uh, jason any last closing comments I know this is just a lot of fun. This, this is the stuff I really find fascinating, especially that last little segment there. That's that's my wheelhouse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. Well, everybody, thanks again. And we'll see you next week uh, for another Scientology Outside of the Church podcast. For myself and for Jason Roba, we will bid you adieu. See you next week. Bye-bye.